Hey everybody, my name is Rob Satcherman. I own Feedback Ranch, we're a digital marketing company that helps small businesses fill their sales funnel with websites, paid ads, social media, and search engine optimization. Today I wanna to talk to my accountants and bookkeepers. You know, um, I kinda got three groups of customers. I've got home services companies, construction companies, then I got a whole ton of accountant companies or accountants, bookkeepers, tax firms. And that's because before I started Feedback Ranch, I actually had my own tax and accounting firm. And boy, it was a little bit different than your typical one. I call it the outsourced accountant model. And long story short, today's video, what I want to do is I want to talk to those of you that are looking to do your own tax and accounting firm, or maybe you currently own a tax and accounting firm. And I want to talk about how it is that you need to tap in to get customers right here and right now, but also how do you tap in to make sure that the customers you get are not just your typical CPA firm or your typical tax only um, people or tax only customers. And that's probably the biggest thing that I wanna address real quick. So again, my name is Rob. If you go to feedbackwrench.com, we have a cool small business here in, in Minneapolis. I mean, we're cool, because I say we're cool. but. Um, Long story short, it's my wife. We've got Byron, our full-time video guy. We've got Daniel and a couple other web designers. And long story short, what we do is we create excellent websites. In fact, I'll just jump right down here. What we do is we do strategy and messaging to help you identify how do you actually get more customers and keep your sales funnel full. Um, we build custom websites. We do paid ads and lead generation. We do marketing funnels and sales funnels. And then we help with search engine optimization. We also do photography and videography. And in this, what I want to talk about is most of you are in this position where you've probably been listening to, um, whether it's Corvy or you've been listening to Rob Satcherm on Feedback Wrench here and hearing about this idea that tax planning and more of an outsourced accountant model where you add a ton more value than a tax return is really important. And I think that is because it's important to your customers because they deserve real good quality guidance instead of just this year-end thing. And, and the typical accountant, if you remember, has to build up so many tax returns in their own business that they're too busy to actually analyze and provide good guidance and advisory services to their small businesses, helping them save money. The three value point propositions that I talk about is help them save taxes and build tax-efficient wealth. Number two, help them save time by being their staff alternative, being a staff accountant. And, and when I say that, I mean... Rather than hiring Patty part-timer for you know eight hours a week, one day a week, maybe they come in, that's $25, $30 an hour, and this economy is probably $50 an hour. Um, you, can, you can charge $15 to $3,500 a month. It'd be a great alternative rather than them hiring staff that they have to lead and develop. And then the last one is to help them stay compliant and help them mitigate risk. Those are the three value propositions that underlying just about everything that you do is going to be there. But what I want to talk about real quick is that um, most business owners don't care about that right away. They don't care about that. And what I've been noticing is as we build websites here, again, we do strategy and messaging. I'm going to be hitting on some strategy here. And we build websites and, and we help accountants fill their sales funnel. So much of what you're hearing from Corby and, and group, even my course, we have a $500 paid course that shows you how to be this outsourced accountant model, how to do great sales, how to land good monthly retainer clients. Um, you can get led to this idea that you don't want to talk to people for taxes and that's not the case. And so what I want to talk about is just to remind you real quick about what it is that we're trying to do when it comes to your digital marketing here. Okay, so right off the bat, what I want to let you know that there's kind of two primary things that we do here at Feedback Ranch. Number one, we build a high converting website. The idea here is to build a better mousetrap. If people are going to come to your website, doggone it, it needs to actually spring and cause people to take a step with you. And then the second thing that we do is we generate traffic and market share. And it's kind of like buying seed for your farm once you've actually built your, your field and you've got your tractors, you've got your infrastructure, your CRM, you've got your staff, you've got yourself set up to actually get or, or close clients. Now you need to buy the seed and invest in that way. So as we move down, those are kind of the two generic things that we do, the top level things. What I want you to think of is that health sales is like a relationship, right? And you need to embrace this idea that the best sales are going to come through a healthy pacing and a healthy process for the sale, right? Just like a healthy relationship wouldn't come about, whereas if I was trying to meet my wife, Heather, over here and I wanted to get married, right? I wouldn't run around and try and find somebody that I think is attractive, that seems like have their head screwed on right, and just go up to them and propose marriage right away, right? No, no. 
There's a healthy pacing. There's a, you know, probably an initial um, see each other. All right, they check the boxes where I find them attractive. They seem like a nice person. I want to get to know them a little bit more. Then you would exchange digits and there would be a process, a first, second, third, 10th, 100th date. There'd be a proposal. There'd be a marriage and there'd be healthy um, pacing to your sale and or to your relationship. And in the same way, a good sale doesn't come from just these knee-jerk, I just need a solution, they walk up. In fact, most sales that just fall in your lap like that are bad and they don't work. So what I wanna talk about is a little bit of what that looks like. So the first thing is to remember that I believe that there's three stages, and this is from Donald Miller's Marketing Made Simple book, which is probably the best book that you could possibly read about how to have the proper strategy and messaging to cause people to want to take a step with you. So the first stage that people go through is this curiosity stage. Then you have enlightenment and then you have commitment, right? And the idea here is during the curiosity stage, you're trying to pique their curiosity about how you make their life better. Throughout the sales interaction, you serve as a guide. You are Yoda and the customer is the hero in the story. They're like Luke Skywalker. And really what you're trying to identify is that you know a better solution for them in the future. You have a vision where they don't mess around in QuickBooks, they don't cause their QuickBooks to be broken and their accounting to suck. They don't really have this lost um, position when it comes to financials. There can be a future where they pay less in taxes, you can mitigate their risks for them, they don't waste time, they have better financials, and they can scale their business. You have a future for them, right? It's just like in Star Wars, which I'm not a huge Star Wars geek, I kind of like it, but... Luke Skywalker is found by Yoda on Yoda's planet, and here Luke, his, his, um, his Starcraft is crashed into the mud, he's stuck, he doesn't know about his father, the rebellion is being crushed, there's all these things, you know, internal, external, uh, big and small going around, and Yoda comes along and he's like, mm, the force, away have I you to achieve goodness and greatness, right? And the idea is, is that you are Yoda, and you're going to help them um, achieve this better future, but the It all starts with this idea of you have to pique their curiosity about how you make their life better. And that's done through things on your website. It's done through things on advertising. And the idea is, is that it can't be about you. Your messaging needs to be about them. It has to talk to their needs, their felt needs. And you need to clearly and concisely communicate that, yep, we do this service. In fact, here's the major need that we hit off. And, uh, and that, so you pique their curiosity. Then what happens is they'll lean in a little bit to find out how you make their life better. They're going to find out how is it that you do this. So sure, you make this claim where you can help me save in taxes, where you can be a better alternative to me hiring Patty part-timer, and you can help me make sure that I don't have, you know, IRS um, explosions happen in my life. But they're going to lean in and do their due diligence, right? And the idea is, is that your website has this empathy and authority on it, this empathy that shows that you understand truly the plight that they're facing and this authority that shows that you've done this before, that you understand how to guide them through this process and you are a predictable, good solution to get them through, right? When you have that going, um, they're going to lean in to be enlightened as to how you work to actually achieve these results. And that's the second stage. And then the third stage is commitment. You know, the thing that we always forget is that everything in sales where the customer takes a step, whether it's giving you their email, giving you a call, asking for a, you know, scheduling a consultation, it costs them. It costs them dearly. So the idea is, is you need to remember that you need to have a clear call to action. You need to ask them for a primary and probably a transitional commitment. And the transitional commitments come in in a little bit. So I just want to remind you folks that that's the number one thing that we're doing, right? Um, After that, what we want to talk about is that a natural progression or a healthy stage in a relationship, you know, it has a first meeting and that's like somebody coming and seeing your website. There are lots of dates as they start to, you know, trust you a little bit more. There's a proposal eventually and that could be like scheduling a consultation with you and then there's a marriage, right? So there's a healthy pacing to that whole thing. Um, As we talk about how that looks in digital marketing, what you're trying to do is lead them from being a stranger to a visitor on on your digital marketing to becoming a lead, to eventually becoming a customer, right? And here's what it's really looking like, is you want to use ads and content, having a marketing funnel, a sales funnel, and an onboarding process to actually move them from stranger to customer, and that's what we're trying to do. But what I want to hit on here is this idea of what is it that's going to cause folks to take a step with you right now? So as a tax and accounting 
professional, what I want you to know is that, um, in fact, let's just hit on it real quick here. There are certain things that work really well in marketing. And I just want to cut through the clutter here because right now tax season is approaching and there's some really important stuff. Number one, the core strategy that's going to work best for you to get more customers is to utilize paid search advertising on Google ads and Bing ads with remarketing and nurturing. So the idea is when they first um, search something, if they're going to search CPA near me, tax accountant near me, bookkeepers near me, bookkeeping services, um, you know, business taxes, business accountant, tax accountant near me, doggone it, you need to pop up. And I'll get into not only do you need to pop up, but you need to realize that you have a local search cheating function that allows you to pop up in front of the big national firms. You have Google My Business. Google My Business with lots of reviews and being optimized. Google My Business with your website together are what Google uses to decide who should I serve up to this customer in this local area. And you need to tap into that. The second thing is, is remarketing. So remarketing is basically saying, let's take all the people that have either clicked on an ad or been to your website and they're somewhat familiar with you already. And now let's make an audience of them on Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and even TikTok. And now let's serve up advertising to that small group of people that have already been touched by you um, by some sort of advertising. And let's work to get eight to 30 touches of your value proposition in front of them, right? And that remarketing, the idea is the first step, they come to you with paid search. The second step, you come to them, right? Because quite frankly, usually what happens is that people are going to, you know, feel all sorts of like, they're going to feel that need to take a step to solve their problem. They jump on the computer, they look at three or four different websites, and then they'll come back to it, right? Even a high converting website maybe has a five to 10% conversion rate. Maybe there's some out there that are way higher, but generally speaking, 90% of the people don't actually take a step. So you want to come to them on the second stage, right? So that's the core thing I want you to focus on in tax season. Here's what I need you to know is that there's this muddled messaging that occurs because of our um, our attempt to try and get people to see a deeper value proposition from their accountant. Because we try to be about saving in taxes and tax planning, because we try and be this outsourced accountant, and because we're trying to keep them compliant and be a CFO and do all of these things for them, we forget that that's not what, it takes a mature business owner for them to tune into those problems. They usually don't think that way. They usually don't have a felt need that they need that. So you need to recognize that and understand that you need to have a digital marketing process and a sales process in place that's going to be a marketing funnel to create them into a lead and a sales funnel that you can work to nurture them along the path to eventually choosing you. And so their felt need is really something you need to tap into. And right now it's tax season. Whenever there's a deadline, quite frankly, that's what's going to induce the big felt needs. So what I'm going to show you are what are the, how should you be using paid search ads or how should you be using SEO and local SEO to tap into getting people to click on your website? Now, just so you know, we set these up. I could do a paid search ad with remarketing between $500 and $2,500 for me to come in and set you up like a king or a queen so that you can actually get tons of leads coming in and you can implement this well. We have some setups between $3,500 and $7,500 with six-month pays to get a sweet website, an SEO-optimized machine, a paid advertising machine with lead magnets and a bunch of other strategies here that I will get into later. But right now, if you want help doing this, whether you're new or you have an existing um, accounting firm, we'd love to do this for you. So what I want to hit on real quick is that just remember, they don't think I need tax planning. In fact, the word tax planning requires a translation. Um, and as much as people want to reduce their taxes, really what they're most concerned about is not getting thrown in jail and not getting audited, right? So here's, I want to show you something here, and I've showed this to people before. Um, essentially what this is are the take action accountant keywords from Google ads over a year. And basically what I tried to show here are the most active take action. Like there's only one reason why you would search these keywords. A take action keyword, which to me is you're looking for a solution or you're a competitor, um, and let's look at those keywords, and I put them into Google Ads, and it will show me kind of a super conservative estimate of how many monthly searches and how many annual searches you're going to have for each one of them. My allergies are killing me. I'm sorry about this. 
Um, and what you'll see is 327,000 searches a month occur for these core take action. This is across the United States, so domestically here in the U.S., which equals about four million a year. And these are the most conservative estimates because these are on the following keywords. So what you'll see here is number one, um, what I want to show you here is here are the searches, the core commercial keywords for an accountant, right? Over here, you have the monthly estimates for the monthly search volume. And then next to it, you have at that time, the competitiveness of that keyword. Okay, so if you were to run Google ads, how competitive are those keywords, right? And over here, you have the actual keyword. So let's just look at this. You have accounting services, accountants, accountants near me, bookkeepers, bookkeepers near me, bookkeeping services, CPA near me, tax preparation, and payroll companies. The reason why I'm hitting on each one of these, notice none of these are tax planning services. If people are searching for tax planning services, they've are like, you want to show up there. We want to run ads for that. But the fact of the matter is your average contractor down the road, your average, you know, um, web developer, marketing company, beautician, whatever kind of customer you're looking for, maybe they're a, a diesel mechanic, a, a fleet services shop, or a landscaping company, a remodeling company, they, they're not really trying to figure out tax planning. They're so busy running their business, they're asking about accountants and taxes and tax prep near me. And you'll notice that each one of these are pretty B2B oriented too. These are not necessarily short of tax preparation, but these are the core keywords. Now, I have an article on my website. If you go to my blog, um, it's SEO for accountants, five step steps to rank on uh, on Google. And basically, I spell out what each one of these are. It will be in the description of this video, and I think it'll be really helpful for you. But um, I really want to show you this idea that these are the keywords. There's a competitiveness. And then over here, what you'll see, look at this graph. Right here is towards your end. And what you'll see is that towards your end, there's like a quintupling of the amount of searches that occur for these keywords. Um, bookkeepers have two, you know, you have wherever there's a deadline, I think it's it's March and year end, right? And bookkeepers near me, same type of deal. Look at CPA near me, it just spikes during tax season and year end. And so what I want you to understand right now is if you wanna get customers, you have to have paid search ads running, okay? You have got to run paid search advertising, and then you have to be set up with remarketing. And remarketing are, is really a simple idea, right? So you make a small audience out of people, or you use a small audience, and there's a couple different types of ads. So the first ad that I'm always talking about here is paid search ads, right? You search accountants near me. Um, and then after that, with the remarketing, you'll see there's a couple different types. Right here, I'm showing an example of a Google display ad. If you've ever been to a website or a blog, or even if you've been on YouTube, you'll see these images show up. Now, these are they're really cheap to get lots of impressions, but the idea is you would make display ads, little images like this, and they would show up to the people that you want. They'll also show up in apps. And here's an example of on politico.com, right? So you have paid search with remarketing. That's kind of the core. Then what you'll see is you'll have Facebook and Instagram ads. And we know how to do this really well. Um, and the idea would be when you remarket to people that have been to your website, perhaps you show a lead magnet. This is an example of something that we do for performancefinancialllc.com. Um, out of Iowa. He does construction taxes and this works really well. We spend about $2 a lead and those, you know, probably 10 leads create a, a, a customer for him. And that ends up being a really good value for him. The other thing that you'll want to have is, are these alternative calls to action, which are like a video sales letter where you would put a video on your website. Um, you'll see that there's a couple other types of ads you can do. You can do YouTube videos. So here's an example of um, a YouTube you have holes in your ad. Foundation and basement experts here at Christian Brothers. So the idea is you can take a group of people that have been to your website, you can make an audience out of them, you can show up on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Google Display, and and uh, even Google Search. There's some things you can do there. But long story short, folks, if you want to have people choose you, you need to tap into this felt need, which is the tax and accounting keywords. 
you need to do some remarketing and you want to remember that what they think they need is just a tax return. And your sales cycle, along with your remarketing and your overall process, is going to deliver more value, which will earn you a higher retainer. Good luck. God bless. If you want help with this, go to feedbackrench.com. I would add that I've got um, my my course here, if you look, if you go to feedbackrench.com, you go for accountants and you go to my online course, you can learn a little bit more about it. I've got it priced at $500 and this will show you exactly how to build a more profitable firm. It's going to show you how to run meetings, how to do your sales, what it takes to actually have those high monthly retainers. We did it and I think you'll like it. Good luck. God bless. And like and subscribe if these are helpful. I got to keep videos coming. Take care.